Welcome to Bible 180 Ezekiel. Ezekiel is among the first exiles taken into captivity prior to the destruction of Jerusalem. In Babylon, he sees a vision of four fantastic beasts rushing towards him, seated above them on a throne, a man, the king of heaven. Ezekiel is given a prophecy in the form of a scroll, which he eats and will then regurgitate. The vision whooshes away, and Ezekiel is so overwhelmed, he just sits down for a week. Ezekiel's life will become an object lesson. He first erects a clay version of Jerusalem and lays on his side, laying siege to it for over a year using manure to cook his food. Then he cuts off his hair. A third he burns, a third he strikes with the sword, and a third he throws to the wind. The inhabitants of Jerusalem will be burned, attacked, and thrown to the wind. Then Zeke sees a vision of the temple in Jerusalem. He sees Jews writing hymns on the temple wall to animal deities and worshiping foreign idols and the goddess of heaven. The Jews were supposed to be holy, but they've desecrated even the temple of the Lord, so the glory of the Lord departs from the temple. Ezekiel uses a lot of metaphors. Jerusalem is a woman who is destitute with no prospects whom the Lord befriended and married. However, she is unfaithful and turns to prostitution with foreign nations. The divided kingdom is like two adulterous sisters. The wide variety of sins and abuses in Jerusalem are like different kinds of metal, but they're all going to be melted down in the furnace of judgment. Israel was once a lofty cedar, but it's rotted, been uprooted and carried off to Babylon. And yet the Lord will take a shoot from this cedar and he will build a new tree in which birds of every na every kind will make their nest. God gets really creative in his eagle because his people aren't listening when he uses his normal voice. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord, so repent and live. The book hones in on prophecy. False prophets prophesy lies. The point of prophecy is not so that people will know the future. Prophecy is so that people might know that God speaks truly and they will listen to him. Even though they will not listen, Ezekiel is duty bound to warn them. Jerusalem's leadership is condemned for abandoning and abusing God's sheep. God will punish the leaders, and he concludes that he must one day come himself to shepherd his people. The phrase, then you will know I am the Lord, is repeated over and over. Many dismissed Yahweh and his prophets. Yahweh will convince them otherwise by prophesying destruction and then following through. And then you will know I am the Lord. Yet he promises to bring the exiles back to Zion. And for the sake of his goodness, he will no longer deal with them as their sins deserve, but instead, he will deal with them mercifully, and then you will know that I am the Lord. Another vivid vision is the Valley of Dry Bones. Ezekiel prophesies to old dry bones. When he does, the bones, sinew, and flesh come back together, and there is a vast army. God will make his people come alive again, even when all hope seems lost. There are detailed instructions for the rebuilding of the temple. God will return the exiles and restore the lost tribes of Israel. He will atone for their sins. From his temple, there will be a fountain flowing deep and wide, which will provide life for all kinds of creatures. His temple will then be called, the Lord is there.